morning, everybody. It's another new day. We're here in Nicolette, Minnesota. I just picked up our load. It's not that heavy. It's not that big. That's the whole thing. So it'll be a nice, smooth ride back up to Manitoba, Canada. I'm gonna deliver this tomorrow morning. I was expecting quite a bit more. So it was a nice surprise when I got in here first thing this morning and they put it on the trailer and we're like, that's it. Really, that's it? That's it. <laughs> Man, I don't even be able to feel this load behind me. I think it's like 4,100 pounds. I hope the wind doesn't blow me away. I don't got much holding me down. Uh, these guys are great here though, uh, really friendly, really awesome. Just like most people that I meet down here in rural Minnesota where I pick up, always great people. All right, let's go home. Well, let's go to our delivery, which is down the road from where I live. So I'm going right past my house and we'll deliver this first thing in the morning. Kimball, Minnesota, population 799 souls, according to their sign. Oh yeah, there's that steep sloped roof again. Watch out for those on the left. Dangerous. Now I remember this town. Vicks. I wonder if they got coffee here anywhere. I could use a coffee. I haven't had one today yet. I saw a truck stop here when I went through here yesterday. Is this it? No, that's not it. Is that it? Casey's. Oh, I don't think that's it. Casey's on the right. There is uh, diesel pumps over there, but they're both filled up right now and there's no extra space. So I don't want to go and plug everything up. I can wait. 15 minutes up the road to St. Cloud and then we'll be on I-94. Oh wait, no, here's another one. Cinex. The truck parking there? On the left. I'm putting my signal on. I think there's truck parking here. Yep, nice, okay, so I'm gonna go in here and uh, cook and get a coffee. Right on. Beginning to think that I was seeing things yesterday. Turn left again, turn left into 170 meters. Java Classics. 
It can be hit and miss with these truck stops in these small towns. Sometimes they got impeccable, amazing coffee that will change your life forever. Other times, it's just coffee flavored water. Kind of too hot to taste it right now. Yeah. I think we're all right. Yeah, I think it's all right. We'll be good with that. All right, let's get out of here. It's kind of a tight lot in here. signal on. Oh boy, just in time for the parade. And this parade isn't nearly as fun as the one yesterday. Suddenly, cars coming from here, cars coming from there. Watch this guy coming from the left. He's got a he's got a camper that's worth more than my house. Beautiful. Unless you like store it and then sell it off in pieces throughout the year. 
but and that farm equipment is expensive. Like a combine could be well over a million dollars. Some farms have like two or three of them. That's just one piece of equipment. They also need probably an air seeder, cultivator, four-wheel drive, like versatile tractor. It's insane how much money it costs to run a farm out here on the plains and the prairies. But I like to eat, so I appreciate them. Well, we're back in Manitoba and it's our lucky day. The scale's open. Hooray! No, Karen. You should know when the scale's open. We don't bypass the scale. Get in a lot of trouble for that. The Manitoba wants to make sure I haven't been eating too much. I mean, they might be a little disappointed. I've had a couple of weeks of holidays recently, and uh, I think I may have put on one or two pounds. Oh, they're gonna know. They're definitely gonna see that. Hopefully, they don't pull me in there to make sure I'm okay. Talk to me about my weight, you know. I know I'm a little fat. I know. Working on it, I am aware. I don't want to be fat. I don't want to get any fatter. I have a plan. Slide right. The hardest part is just starting the plan. Once once you start the plan, then the plan's in motion. Six hundred meters. Turn right on Fifth Street West. See if they'll say anything. Maybe they'll just sort of like raise their eyebrows, like, "Oh, he put on some weight." Maybe they won't even. Maybe they won't even notice. You know. Maybe they'll be polite and just won't say anything. As for my truck and trailer, I mean, that's nothing to worry about. I only got 4,100 pounds of freight on my trailer, so. My gross weight is about 40,000. My battery died, of course, just as I got to the scale there. Sorry about that, guys. I got the red light. So I'm pulling around the scale again. Gonna go park beside the scale. Uh, he wants to take a look at my trailer. He was asking me what's hanging underneath my trailer there. It's my airlines. They're on like a spring. Like most trailers you see, you'll see airlines sort of hanging off a spring or something underneath there. So I think he's probably just gonna take a peek at that and be like, oh, oh okay. This guy in front of me here got pulled in too. So, uh, guy's gonna come out and take a look at it. There he comes. All right, I'll talk to you in a bit. It wasn't the airlines, it was actually the uh, brake leveling valve, I'm sorry, the uh, just the air leveling valve on the trailer suspension is hanging down a little low. This trailer sits really low though, so the axles and all of that equipment, like the air leveling valve and everything are very close to the ground. I guess it makes him nervous, but he took a look at it and that was that. No tickets or anything. Look at these golden crops. What happened? I'm not ready to be done with summer yet. This one on the left has already been harvested. That might have been winter wheat though. They plant it the year before and then it, it grows faster than the rest. It starts growing sooner in spring. But look at this, just golden fields as far as the eye can see. You're gonna see combines galore out here in like a week or two, I bet. Farmers are getting all warmed up doing your stretches. Doing all your pre-season inspections and all your equipment, I'm guessing. Servicing your equipment. Good luck to y'all. I know it's a lot of work in harvest season. This is St. Pierre, Manitoba. That right lane is ending right away. Gas prices in Manitoba, $1.49.9. Yikes. 
You know, it doesn't sound crazy to think that I remember when it was 49.9, not a dollar 49.9. I remember there being sales at the Touron gas station up here, up to 59, for 39.9 on Fridays. You can go there, buy some gas, and they'd have a, like a, a hot dog stand or a, a hot dog truck there. You go buy a hot dog and get some cheap juice. 39.9. Now we're paying $1.49.9, and that's without sales tax on fuel. Because right now we're still on our tax holiday here in Manitoba. They've removed fuel tax. I think it's an effort to win over Southern Manitoba to the new government. I mean, we'll take, we'll take the tax break. It might take a little more than that to win us over, but uh, we'll take the tax break. Hats off to that. Well, I was able to stop by home for a few hours and have a good supper at home and see Theo and also get the sewer pump fixed. I didn't fix it. Our friend Marvin did. <laughs> Thanks, Marvin, if you're watching this. Really appreciate you coming out. Uh, he's our plumber. And uh, uh, got home today and I walked into the laundry room because I was going to have a shower. So I brought my dirty laundry into the laundry room, right? And uh, I smell this burning. Smells like smoke in the laundry room. I was like, huh. And I thought back to it the day. Like in the morning, my wife called me and said, hey, we got no water pressure in the house. I was like, well, I'll go check the breaker, see if the breaker got flipped, right? Because uh, we have uh, our dehumidifier, our water pump, and our sewer pump on the same breaker. And if they were all going at the same time, I thought, maybe the breaker flipped. So she goes downstairs. Oh, no kidding. Breaker slipped. So she turns the breaker back on. Water pump turns on, water's working, right? So she says, water's working. I thought the problem was solved. I get home and again, I smell that smoky smell. So I go and uh, touch the water pump. It's cool. It's nothing wrong with it. And we have pressure in all the faucets in the house. So I go to the sewer pump and I touch it and I immediately like pull, pull my hand back and burnt my hand. It was so hot. Like, what in the world's going on here? Our sewer pump. So hot. Turns out the sewer pump was seized. And that's what flipped the breaker in the morning. It must have been just about seized. Because when she turned it on in the morning, when she turned the breaker back on, the sewer pump did turn back on and pumped out our, our water. Because we have a, a, a low pressure uh, sewer system, right? With our, uh, with our sewer. So that pumped that out. Then, uh, I guess it seized throughout the day. It was on its literal last legs. So, good thing I went home today because I realized that the sewer pump was frozen. Now, here's the weird thing. Our father-in-law gave us a sewer pump like a few weeks ago. Randomly. Because he got a new uh, uh, septic tank installed in their house. And they had a, a new septic pump that's in their tank. And he didn't need the old one. So... He came to us and just randomly said, here's a sewer pump. You might need it in the future. We're like, oh, thank you. Like, obviously, like, well, thank you very much. We appreciate it so much. And you know, how much do we owe you for it? And anyways, all that aside, a couple weeks later, our sewer pump seizes. What are the chances? <laughs> so we had an extra sewer pump, which is like a $1,200 value. And we had our friend uh, Marvin, who works for our local uh, uh, plumbing company out here, uh, Browns Plumbing and Heating. They're, they're, we're MVPs there. Uh, we, uh, that, that's our plumbing company that we've been using for years and years and years. And we just became friends with uh, uh, Marvin and Amanda, who live there. They have a son who is like almost the exact age as Theo. And, uh, oh, now uh, our sons are like best friends and they're playing all the time. So we're always getting getting together with them. They're great people. I, I love hanging out with them. Marvin's a great guy. We have the same sense of humor, uh, sort of the same background and everything. We get along really well. So uh, he was on call tonight. It was about 7 o'clock when I realized this. So we call into our plumbing company and we say, hey, we tell them what's going on. Like, we need this fixed now because our sewer is going to overflow if we don't get this fixed right now. Turns out... Marvin's on duty. He's on call. So he comes out and uh, installs the new pump for us. 
and uh, fixes it all up. He's the hero of the day. Uh, thank you again, <laughs> Marvin. I know you're watching this. <laughs> you really were the hero today. Uh, I'm not uh, versed in plumbing. I'm not a very good plumber. We all have our strengths, and we all are good at something. That's not one of the things I'm good at. But uh, thankfully, he is. So that problem got fixed. So it was just luck that I got home tonight. I was at home, was able to sort this all out, get it all fixed. Now I'm back in the truck. I have to unload this freight on my trailer first thing tomorrow morning in Bozizer, Manitoba. So that's where we'll be in the morning. And from there, we'll go back home. So I've got a short day tomorrow, sort of just, as far as I know, get this unloaded and go home. I have a, a funeral to go to on Saturday, so I, I, I can't take any loads out over the weekend. I can leave on Sunday or even Saturday evening, but um, I don't know if you guys remember the neighbor. Sorry, I'm sort of in story mode right now. Our neighbor, when we lived at our old house, remember? His name was Tony, a really good friend of mine. Uh, he was a, an elderly gentleman. Uh, I don't know exactly how old he was. I would say in his 90s, maybe? 80s or 90s? And remember, whenever when I worked local, I used to be home every night, and I would leave for work every morning. And remember, Tony was always in the window every single morning, without fail. Every single morning when I left work, he'd be waiting for me in his window. And when I'd back out of my driveway and drive past his house, he'd be out there waving. And as soon as I would drive away, he'd go straight to his computer, and he'd get on Facebook, Facebook Messenger, and he'd send me a message. And say something along the lines of, Josh, you have a great day. And remember, always expect the unexpected. Every day. And the odd day that he would miss waving at me, he'd feel so bad. Because maybe he went to the bathroom or he was in the kitchen making some breakfast or pouring a coffee. And uh, <laughs> he would message me immediately after. I saw you already left and I missed you. I am so sorry. I, I will send you a virtual wave. And remember, always expect the unexpected and have a wonderful day. Every single day he would do that. He would always give us gifts. When Theo was born, uh, they, they gave us uh, uh, gifts to welcome Theo home. When we moved in, they gave us uh, housewarming gifts. They were just the best neighbors ever. It was Tony and Mary. Mary was his wife. And it's going to get a little sad right now because Tony passed away just before we moved into our new house. He was a good man. In the short time I knew him at the end of his life, he made such a big impact on my life. I have this saying now. Be like Tony. <laughs> Whenever I'm getting frustrated with people or like sort of frustrated with life or maybe depressed or down or uh, anything. You know what? Be like Tony. Be happy. Be a positive influence on people's lives. Just be happy. Wave at people. Smile at them. Tell them to have a good day. And remember, always expect the unexpected. So Tony passed away just before we moved. And shortly after he passed away, his wife Mary also passed away. So it was very sad for me, for Brett. So uh, on Saturday is uh, his memorial. Uh, what his family's calling his, his the celebration of life. So I'm, I'm guessing it's not going to be just a complete, uh, just, just a sad event, though it will be. It'll be a sad event, but we're also going to be there to celebrate his life. I didn't know him his whole life. I'm, I'm very eager to get to know him and his family, or like his family, and get to know him through their stories of him, because I only knew him towards the end of his life. But. Uh, that's what we're doing on Saturday. We're going to go celebrate Tony and Mary. Great people. Great neighbors. And uh, they're in the next world now. So there's that. Sorry to end on a sad note, guys. I've been yapping for long enough here, and uh, I need to go to bed. I need to deliver this load in the morning and get back home. So remember, everybody, have a great day and expect the unexpected. I'll see you tomorrow.